Good morning, Upper Dublin. I hope everyone survived midterms and is ready to dive headfirst into the second half of the school year. Uh, maybe more like a belly flop for me, but I guess we'll give it a shot. Tyler, why do museums have old dinosaur bones? I don't know, Manasia. Why do they have old bones? Because they can't afford new ones. Very funny, very funny. Well, uh, Upper Dublin's Dr. Schmidt doesn't have to buy any dinosaur bones because he digs them up himself. Let's go take a look. It's actually, the Bighorn Basin is one of the best uh, fossil regions for dinosaurs in all of North America. This is the first time that these fossils have ever been on display to any human being in Earth history. Every single one of those bones were already connected and articulated together. Dinosaurs, for a lot of kids, are the gateway into science. Especially since we've had now six Upper Dublin students out working with us, we wanted to highlight the work that they had done. You're talking about things that are exceptionally fragile, mm -hmm. but scientifically extremely valuable. There are flowers out here, there are entire ecosystems out yeah. here, and it's harsh, but there's a lot of life that you don't realize in the display, because a display of this magnitude, of this type, is practically unheard of in a high school. Dominic Perry's hitting the streets again. Where's he going? Where's he going? Today, Dom's going to do some kickflips and grinds and ollies over at Ambler Skate Shop. Gnarly, dude. <laughs> hey, UD. Welcome back to Hitting the Streets. As always, I'm your host, Dom Perry. In today's edition of Hitting the Streets, we are back in Ambler. Today, we're at The Yard, an indoor skate park and Ambler Skate Shop's newest edition. Let's go check it out. The Ambler Skate Shop is located on Main Street. It has been a staple of the Ambler community since its opening. But the shop decided it was time to add something new to the mix. So they opened The Yard, an indoor skate park. I talked with the owner, Mike McGuire, to get the breakdown. So Mike, thank you for joining me. Um, you're a UD alum, right? Yeah, 99. All right. Um, so how long have you owned the uh, Ambler Skate Shop? So uh, my best buddy and I took over in 2010, so nine or 10 years now, I guess. Yeah. Um, what made you guys want to open the yard? Um, so we had skateboarding and screen printing in, in one building, and then in the winter, everything kind of slows down. People don't have a place to skate. The weather's inclement, and you're like, man, you know, you want, you want business to pick up, and you want to give people a place to enjoy themselves still. Mm -hmm. So the yard was kind of like, we had an opportunity to, to take advantage of a space like this and build a park and get, keep people skating, and also like get, get new people involved in skateboarding, and you have like a a safe place to do that. So so everything from the old store is now going to be transitioned over here? Yeah, Ambler Skate Shop and Ambler Apparel will be under one roof mm -hmm. and it's uh, the yards, the house, so that's where we're at now. So UD, uh, be sure to check out the yard and make sure to support your local small businesses. This week everyone's favorite funny man is in the hot seat for over under. Mr. Gessing? No, Manasia. Connor Graham. Shoelaces are underrated. Um, I mean, they're, they're a pretty important part of the shoe in general. Because, like, if you just put on a shoe without shoelaces, then, like, the shoe could easily come off your foot. But, oh, oh, wait, shoelaces tie them up, double knot, they stay on. So, like, it's, a, it's pretty. I mean, I got, shoe, I got shoelaces on right now, and, like, double knot, and these shoes, I, I got. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is overrated. Uh, it should be a horror movie because, I mean, just, just think about the concept. An old man 
who runs a chocolate factory, invites five kids in, but only one comes out normal. Like the one gets sucked up a tube of chocolate and the other one gets turned into like a giant blueberry. Like, what kind of sick man does that? And how do the other families just go on like nothing happened? Like you just witnessed some kid die and yet you're going on through a chocolate factory eating candy like it's nothing. Movie theater popcorn is underrated. Um, it is the best kind of popcorn, because if you make popcorn at home, it's just not going to be the same, because it's not like drenched in like that, that sweet butter, you know? That's like, it gives it like the, it gives movies like their own flavor, which is nice. Tyler, you know the UD blood drive's coming around. Uh, yeah, giving blood's a great way to donate. Let's find out more from the Key Club. Good morning, Upper Dublin. Um, we are going to be holding our annual Red Cross blood drive on Wednesday, February 12th in the Ox Gym from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're going to be pushing out a Google Drive on the junior and senior class schoologies, along with a height and weight requirement to see if you qualify to give blood. So if you're 16, you're going to have to get a permission slip signed by your parents. Um, and those are going to be available at all lunches and also in Dr. Callahan's office. But if you're 17 or older, you don't need to get a permission slip. On the day of the drive, you're going to have to bring in your student ID as well as your permission slip if you're 16. The Google form will let you guys choose your preferred time and some other information you need to fill out. Emails will be sent to those who fill out the form to give more details about the event. So last year we collected over 90 pints of blood and saved almost 270 lives. So donating blood is just a really easy way to give back to your community and it makes a huge impact on the lives of people that we save. And our goal this year is to collect even more pints than last year. So sign up. Tyler, what's your favorite album this year? Uh, there was a lot of good ones, Manasia, but probably The Lost Boy by YBN Corday. That's pretty fire. Aaron and Kaya are looking at the best music from last year. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Aaron. And I'm Kaya. And we're here to discuss some of the most influential songs, albums, and artists of 2019 and how it all went down at the 2020 Grammys. First up, albums. When it comes to top albums of 2019, the top tier goes to Billie Eilish's When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Dropping her first studio album in late March of last year, Eilish quickly rose to the top of the Billboard charts. She was nominated for many Grammys and walked away with a total of five. Vampire Weekend has also come out with their fourth album, Father of the Bride. The New York indie band combines elements of strings, dance hall, Latin punk, and third world percussion to create a soundscape of genres. Their album, which came out in May, Father of a Bride, was nominated for Best Album and Best Song for their song that appears on the album, Harmony Hall, and Best All Album, which they won. Now, the song that completely dominated the charts in 2019 was Lil Nas's no, Lil Nas X's Old Town Road. This song was currently Lil Nas's Ride to Fame, and it was a great way to expose kids to growing genre of pop rap. He was nominated for six Grammys and won two for music video and best pop duo performance. Another huge song this year was Sunflower by Post Malone featuring Sway Lee. This song not only became a highlight of Malone's discography, but was featured in the 2019 animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It was nominated for Record of the Year uh, as well, as pop duo performance, but did not win. There were many notable artists this year, but a few caught our attention. One of the biggest breakout artists of 2019 was Lizzo. Her unique voice, commanding stage presence, and confident lyrics all contribute to her recent success. She won Best Pop Solo Performance and was nominated for a total of five Grammys, too. The Jonas Brothers also made a huge comeback, their first single in almost 10 years. With their new single, Sucker, they quickly rose back up to the charts and even, even went on a nationwide tour. They, no they were nominated for Best Pop Duo Performance. They did not win, though. Well, that's all for the Grammys. I'm Aaron. And I'm Kaya. Thanks, UD. Tyler, what did you work on for this episode? Uh, well, actually, Manasia and Miss Ippolito's English class, uh, the students are working on a grand gesture where they have to help the community in a certain way. And I chose to make a segment on UDTV about a topic that may not be spoken about a lot, but it truly needs to be discussed. Hello, Upper Dublin. I know typically on UDTV, uh, making jokes and trying to make you laugh, but today the topic is a bit more serious. I'll be teaching you about a subject that may be sore for many, but truly needs to be talked about. Today, suicide rates among all age groups are rising faster than ever before. More teenagers die from suicide than heart disease, cancer, AIDS, 
birth defects, stroke, pneumonia, influenza, chronic lung disease combined. Each day in our nation there's an average of over 3,068 attempts by young people, grades 9 to 12. If these percentages were added to 7th and 8th grade, the numbers will be even higher. And lastly, four out of five teens who attempt suicide has shown clear warning signs. To me, this is the hardest fact to endure because it hurts to know that a lot of these tragedies could have been prevented and people could have found help. Which brings me to our next topic, finding signs of risk by taking the step to help out a friend that you know is at risk. That step might seem difficult, but in the end, you could be saving a life. Some of the most common signs you can look for are talking about suicide or wanting to kill oneself talking about feeling hopeless or having no purpose in life, withdrawal or feeling isolated or acting anxious or agitated or even reckless. And finally, here's what to do if you notice these signs amongst peers. Reach out to a trusted adult, whether that be a nurse, guidance, your parents, their parents, a principal or a teacher. Reaching out can be the first step to saving a life. Talk to the person in need. Don't be shy to say things like, you're not alone in this, I'm here for you. Or, I may not understand exactly how you feel, but I want to help. Or even, I wanted to check in with you because I know you haven't been acting yourself lately. And lastly, in a real emergency, do not be afraid to pick up the phone and call 911 or suicide hotline, because they're always there to answer. And finally, if you're experiencing any of these feelings yourself, do not be afraid to go get some help. We want to save lives. Thank you for listening. <laughs> That's all for today, folks. Have a great second half of the school year. And this has been your UDTV. UDTV.